Well, here we are again. Tyler's about to review another Assassin's Creed game and talk about how it's not Assassin's Creed, how it's not like the old games, and how he's never been this disenfranchised with the series. I wish I was joking, but I'm not. So strap yourselves in and get those flaming keyboard fingers fire ready, because I'm about to go off. I mean, honestly, I really thought this time would be different. I really thought Valhalla would be a last sort of hoorah as a fan for me. A final send-off as to why I love this series, and I could then move on and let go unencumbered by the years of baggage I've carried as an Assassin's Creed fan. Hoping to one day play an AC game that deals with the philosophical dilemmas of Order vs Chaos, of Assassins vs Templars, of who is right and who is wrong in the pursuit of truth and peace in the world. To delve into a fascinating historical setting and explore what it is like to be an assassin and a Templar in that time period. And what we got was something many fans were in fact happy with, while others like myself were left, well, disappointed would be putting it mildly. A game that took one element of Assassin's Creed Universe and in my opinion shoved it up its own ass, leaving all the other pieces I loved unexplored or unsatisfyingly dangled there in front of me to get excited about and then not paid off. How did we get here? How is this where the franchise is going? I don't want to sit here in this review and break down every element of Assassin's Creed Valhalla as a game. I want to explore where I think it all went wrong and what it is I'm truly missing from this franchise. So it's not really a review in a way. This is more of an explanation of where I stand with the Assassin's Creed franchise right now. I mean, it's pretty obvious to me. What's Assassin's Creed missing? It's fucking Assassins. But I digress. I want to be very clear to everyone in this video why Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be my last Assassin's Creed game. I feel like we need to start from where this all really went wrong. Because honestly, I think in a lot of ways Assassin's Creed Valhalla is the best it could be considering what came before it and the trend it was forced into. So let's explore the question, where did it go wrong? We could start with Assassin's Creed 3 where we spent five years and five games building this insanely detailed, mysterious, end-of-the-world story through historical events and settings that connected so brilliantly to an overarching modern-day storyline with a slow burn that then rushed itself to a completely unfulfilling end, while also giving us the journey of a boring historical setting and dull character whose main villain was the character you actually wanted to play as. Even still, I do not blame Assassin's Creed 3 for this. Could it be Unity? The game that nailed what the assassin fantasy is and finally gave people the chance to play assassin in co-op together. But because the game released with as many bugs as Cyberpunk 2077, Ubisoft then took no responsibility for their poor decision making with development structure and instead decided that the audience and market thought assassins were boring or something, then losing itself altogether. I don't blame Unity completely for this, though this was maybe a beginning point of the end. Or was it Assassin's Creed Syndicate, the Monty Python-like parody Assassin's Creed game that just couldn't take itself seriously enough for five minutes to give us any resemblance of where this franchise came from? No, Syndicate is too forgettable to take the fall for this one. Though, in some ways, it may be a mixture of all of these, while in other ways it's none of these games at all. We are currently in this Assassin's Creed RPG trilogy era period this trilogy could have taken us down a path of exploration and discovery in open world historical settings playing as assassins in a time and place that many fans have wanted to see us all go to. The fault comes originally from this point, and then it snowballs. Assassin's Creed Origins was the first Assassin's RPG and it's given a lot of love, mainly for its incredible main character Bayek of Siwa who encompassed the type of person that should and could be an assassin and represent the franchise of Assassin's Creed going forward. But what Origins is tied down by was a shackling leveling system, uninteresting sidecast, and no real long-term structure as to where the story fits in the grand scheme of Assassin's Creed. Looking back, the only thing to love about Origins is Bayek. That brings us to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, a game with no assassins in it, set in a time period where assassins didn't exist. A game that took the franchise that's grounded in using history as a playground, mixing it with science fiction, and made the franchise into an embarrassingly shallow, overbloated fantasy RPG with monsters, gods, and fucking superpowers. Who the Isu were in the original Assassin's Creed games were a race of beings that were flawed, 
high on their own power and full of ego. Those who came before humans, not gods, not magical beings, but beings like humans. They just had an extra sense, the ability to read time. This interesting race of beings who created the Pieces of Eden have been a mystery throughout the Assassin's Creed franchise, and what Origins and most especially Odyssey did was take open that curtain that had been covered up for so long, and what they showed was not at all anything that lived up to the expectations built the ten years before in Assassin's Creed. Where Assassin's Creed Valhalla comes into the mix is, is in a franchise that's in a state that's moved so far away from itself that the franchise barely has any assassins in it at all, let alone as protagonists. The gameplay is overbloated and shallow. The story has a focus on fantasy, that is the Isu, so much that it's more about the shockingly fantastical and not in the groundedness that is real philosophical and historical events that the franchise built its legacy on. That's where we're at. That's where Assassin's Creed Valhalla is forced into. That's the slate and foundation we're laid into when this game starts. So what I'm saying is, it's not completely Valhalla's fault for the direction it was forced into. I understand and agree they probably did the best they could with a bad situation, but it is in no realm an Assassin's Creed game that I am looking to play, and if this is where we are now, I have no reason to ever play Assassin's Creed again. Assassin's Creed Valhalla built itself on and started off as a game that was trying to please its entire audience. Those who had been around since the beginning of the franchise, as well as those more recent fans. I would say that probably for the first 6-8 to eight hours it did. In fact, it did a great job of that. The dev team managed to create this believable Norse world and setting, giving us an introduction to the very Viking-centric story while hinting at some greater mysteries, that of the Isu and then introducing even some assassins or hidden ones into the game in a really cool way, showing us elements of their philosophy, culture, and their training. All this I really dug early on. However, as the game went on, and on, and on, and on, and on, I was left wondering, when is the assassin storyline going to start? Is Eivor going to become an assassin? Is Basim ever going to actually reveal the secrets of the assassins to his friends? or reveal the true depths of that the assassins exist in, in the 8th century. I wanted to know, and I began to worry when it was all going to come. What Assassin's Creed Valhalla does is create a vast Viking game set in the 8th century England, and establish a very traditional story structure of arcs and sagas, much like the primary historical texts of those cultures from that time. Telling the sagas of our hero Eivor through many different chapters with reoccurring themes, places, and characters spread throughout, while having them all not necessarily connect to each other or have any overarching narrative really besides our central hero. This is a structure that in a Viking game would make sense and was certainly filled with fun moments. However, the 19 2 3 hour arcs range from the interesting to complete time wasters. These stories did not all have importance, or continue any overarching story, and certainly not a story I was looking for. Now let me say this before going into what I actually wanted and what I really disliked about this game. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is by far and away the best of this RPG trilogy, in terms of world building, in terms of gameplay, in terms of exploration, customization, soundtrack, and setting. The only thing it couldn't beat was its character, that of Bayek. But Valhalla did have a lot to like in those ways. When it comes to the characters of the world, that being a major supporting characters, villains, or random encounters, it felt like a derby game. It felt like a game with a lot of heart. There were so many fun moments throughout I truly enjoyed and arcs that I had a great time with. The Vinland arc actually made me have an entirely new perspective on Assassin's Creed 3. The three city arcs and their mission structures and homages to AC1 was truly great to see. But what lacked in all of these areas was the character we were playing as. Eivor is a viking seeking his or her glory and reputation by any means necessary, building a safe settlement for their people and killing for their own benefit. Eivor does not understand the true philosophy of being an assassin nor understand the important references that surround him or her throughout the story. When you complete all the Hidden One bureaus spread throughout England, you get an incredible letter from Bayek explaining so much about what it means to be a Hidden One. Something you would think may be a story moment to turn our main character on a new path. But Eivor can't even read the language. We are at the end of the day a viking, not an assassin. And no city arc assassination will change the fact that it doesn't make sense as to why Eivor is doing any of this. Because Eivor certainly has no true personal investment nor philosophical investment in doing any of these hidden one story arcs. 
I failed to connect with why Ava was doing the majority of things Ava was doing at all. And the things that are clear as to why Ava was doing it are the Viking story elements. The things that I just didn't care about. So I lacked the connection majorly to the main character who never cared about nor understood the things that mattered to me as a player. While the character traits that matter to Eivor in the narrative are those that I couldn't connect with and didn't care for. I don't care about being a Viking. I don't care about raiding a village. I don't care about glory. What I want to explore is an Assassin's Creed game in a historical setting from the perspective of, you guessed it, an assassin. Have that character deal with both personal and philosophical challenges based on the belief system of that time and how the true nature of the world contradicts just that. How being an assassin or a Templar requires the sacrifice of letting go from personal glory and becoming something more. Someone that fights for a greater truth or purpose. Order versus chaos. When that story comes to you, couple it with an overarching narrative in a modern day and Easter storyline, then you have a winner. To me, the modern day and Easter story are always secondary to the ancestor storyline because it's the ancestor we are playing as for 99% of the game. So if you fail to nail that ancestor story, the rest falls to the wayside. So to me, the game was set up to fail for the payoff based on what I'm looking for in an Assassin's Creed game. One of the biggest criticisms of Assassin's Creed Valhalla is its length. The game is simply too long. There are at least seven arcs in there that don't need to be. They added no character development, no overarching story, and no major payoffs to justify its own existence. I honestly spent the final third of my time playing the game and I just wanted it to end. I was so overplaying the game that things I would have maybe enjoyed, I just didn't at that point. But what ultimately makes this game such a loss to me is its ending. Assassin's Creed Valhalla's story is in simple terms this. Three Isu, who survived the Toba catastrophe through the seventh method of salvation, that of reincarnation through the life tree, similar to a sage, comes back all at the same time in history, Odin, Tyr, and Loki. These three different consciousnesses fight over their respective host consciousness. We see that with Eivor throughout the game, fighting with Odin, and inevitably they finish off by fighting over the same old beef they were fighting over 75,000 years earlier. So let me say that again. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is about three reincarnated Isu who come back at the same time in human history together and work together for Viking raiding up until the point they decide to fight each other 75,000 years later. Maybe that sounds cool to some people, but to me it is just utter nonsense. Especially, they're all just fucking Norse gods. They're not even Isu. They are, but they're not. Like, let's be honest with ourselves. There was no fucking Isu named Loki up until they wrote this game. They just added these Isu in because it's a Norse game and they just happened to reincarnate in that period and fucking here we are. But the reason that stands out as such nonsense is this. What I absolutely hated most about Assassin's Creed Valhalla was its Norse mythology storylines. That's not me saying I don't like Norse mythology. I do. I've read the goddamn poetic Edda and prose Edda. But the way it's done in Valhalla was easily the most boring, head-banging against the wall gameplay portion of any Assassin's Creed I've ever played. Every minute I was in these hallucinations, I wanted it to end. Most especially the Asgard story. Literally, I've spent my time texting James saying, how long is this? I want it to end. This has to be over. I'm five minutes in, I hate it. I fucking hate it. Jotunheim had its moments where you realize it's telling a story of previous Isu civilizations before the Toba catastrophe. You've got Juno, you've got Jupiter, you've got Minerva, and then you throw in Loki and Tyr and Odin, and it's just... It's fucking ridiculous. It's really, it's ridiculous. But from a playing point of view, it was just so boring and nothing I want to see from an AC game. To give it some credit, I never played the fate of Atlantis and Odyssey, so it may not be the worst gameplay element in Assassin's Creed history, but certainly the one I've played. So, for those two arcs to be the most important payoff to the main story was simply a kick in the fucking teeth. For those arcs to mean what they meant, and for that story to be about fucking Loki, the Norse god getting revenge on Odin for killing his wolf son is ludicrous to me. Especially when you fail to introduce any sort of influential Assassin's Creed storyline throughout the game. How is that anything someone would be looking for from an AC game? And for the tease of Bassam being a hidden one, and for him to more or less do absolutely nothing to be or act like an assassin for the final 95% of the game, and just be a reincarnation of Loki, is simply just a fuck around to me. The opposite 
of what a misdirect should be. Assassin's Creed Valhalla just gave me nothing I was looking for in an Assassin's Creed game, and the elements it did remotely right were not paid off in a good way. Forgotten about, or mattered so little to the character I was playing as, it felt like it didn't matter at all and it was just a tease with no satisfying conclusion. The game is near 100 hours long to just finish and only about 12 of those hours mattered, which were hallucination storylines that I truly wanted to smash my head through the wall while playing. Doug McDevitt is one of my favourite video game writers of all time. I think he is the only man that should be in charge of the narrative direction of Assassin's Creed. And I, like I said earlier, I don't blame this all on Valhalla. The game was forced into a corner from what came before it. They did a lot right, but this was not the direction I was hoping for nor ever wanted to see AC go down. There were some well thought out elements that paid off some extremely old Assassin's Creed secrets, but I think after so much time they mattered so little to me, most especially because the events that surrounded them were not what I was hoping for. Desmond coming back and Layla being the Eve to his Adam as the readers of the calculations. That's certainly a well executed payoff, but the end of the world story seemed to just get palmed off for this Bassam story that just seemed utter nonsensical to me. To finish off, I just want to say I'm over it. I'm exhausted. Assassin's Creed is so clearly no longer made for me, and I am so out of touch with what the fans want, clearly. A lot of people loved this game. I know a lot of people who didn't, and feel like I feel. But at the end of the day, I really thought that this was a development team that were going to give me that Assassin's Creed feeling again. But they didn't. If they couldn't, I don't think anyone can. I will stick with replaying the old original four Assassin's Creed games in the franchise, and I'll continue making real history videos on those Assassin's Creed games that connect. But for me, I've no desire to play more Assassin's Creed games, or even the expansions of Valhalla. It's been a great run for me as a fan and as a content creator, but at the end of the day, this is not what I'm looking for when I play Assassin's Creed. All I asked from Valhalla was simple. Assassins in Assassin's Creed. It couldn't give me that in any meaningful way, and with that, I'm done.